everybody. Thanks for tuning in to our first day. Thanks for tuning in to our first day of uh, school at home with the Bowers. Oh. Thank you. Okay, um, my kids are joining me this morning, Cammie and Wyatt. They're, Cammie's still in her pajamas, so she's not going to be on uh, the computer. So we're going to wait a few minutes to see who else is joining us. Hi, Jen. Look, Jen, Jen's watching. Jen and Wesley are watching. That's cool. I like the crowd here. So that means we don't have school. Oh. Oh. All right, we're just going to wait a few minutes. I'm just going to All right, good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Um, thanks for joining us. In a couple minutes, I'm going to read a story, and then we're going to talk about it, and then we'll do some math, and uh, we're focusing on shapes today. So, um, okay. You know what? You guys need to leave if you're going to do that, for real. Serious. Okay. Okay. We'll wait a couple more minutes and then we'll start. You guys might want to put your chairs right here because I'm going to show the book toward the computer. So if you want to see the pictures, you should probably move that way and face me over here so you can see. And then you can move back when we do the lesson if you want to. Okay. Hmm? Looks like you're right there. Yeah. No, Mom, I'm actually just going to look at the computer. Oh, I can't really see that, can they? Why is that? Oh, yeah, that one's better. Thanks. You can see it, though. Mm hmm I'm trying to see black. Those markers are just light, aren't they? Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody, we're gonna get started. Um, don't worry if you're not tuned in because this will be on my this will be on my Facebook page. So can you hit the cap wipe? So if you miss it, you can always watch it later on. Okay, so the book we're gonna read today is called The Greedy Triangle. It's gonna be interesting to see how I can hold this here. And I'm gonna show it to my kids too. And um, this is about a, a little triangle. And uh, he has three sides, and he has, I need my, face. my class is unruly and I only have two kids. Get, find a spot and stay there. Okay, why move over a tiny bit. I'll hold it right here so you can see it, okay? Thank you. You'll be fine. Okay, this is about a little triangle who uh, right now has how many sides? Three. And how many angles does it have? Three. An angle is the corner he's of the shape. Um, and you're going to find out that he's not really that happy being himself. So we're going to go ahead and read the story. And you guys aren't going to answer things unless I ask you, okay? Because people need to listen. Okay, here we go. The greedy triangle. Okay, let's see how I can do this here. Once there was a triangle that was, as most triangles are, always busy. The triangle spent its time holding up roofs, supporting bridges, making music in a symphony orchestra, catching the wind for sailboats, being slices of pie and halves of sandwiches, and much, much more. So you see all the things the triangle can do? He can be the sail on a sailboat. He can be the triangle. Have sandwiches, roofs. And a lot more than that. So he's got a pretty important job, doesn't he? He has a lot of things. The triangle's favorite thing, however, was to slip into place when people put their hands on their hips. Put your hand on your hip and see if it makes a triangle shape. It does. That way, I always hear the latest news, it said, which I can tell my friends. The triangle's friends liked hearing the news. Can you open it? See, look. I'm sorry. I'm going to fix it later, Wyatt. Look. 
Do you see? <laughs> One day, the triangle began to feel dissatisfied. I'm tired of being the same old things, it grumbled. There must be more to life. So the triangle went to the local shapeshifter. <laughs> How may I help you, the shapeshifter asked the triangle. I think if I just had one more side and one more angle, said the triangle, my life would be more interesting. That's easy to do, said the shapeshifter, and poof, the shapeshifter turned the triangle into a, now don't say it, think about it. What kind of shape has one more side and one more angle than a triangle? And there's lots of different names for this shape. So um, why? what's one name for this shape? What would you call this? Square. You could call it a square. Squares have four sides and four angles. Cammie, what else could you call it? Well, can you think of any other names for the shape? We're in something, I think it's called polygon. Yeah, polygon is actually any shape that has straight sides. Nope, it can it can have nope, it can have any number of sides. So yes, this is this is a polygon. This is also be a square if it has four equal sides. At home, see if you can think of any other names for this shape besides a polygon and a square. Can you guys think of any other names? Mm -hmm. There's a few more. Well, I think I know one, but I just forgot what it's called again. It starts with a Q. It, it does like start a with a Q. There's two that start with a Q. I just forgot what it's called. Can you tell me? Quadrilateral yeah, that's is any four-sided oh, shape. Yeah, that's what I love quad, because quad stands for four. And a quadrangle has four angles. Four quad is four and angle quadrangle. Also, you could call this a para um, parallelogram because why? Why is it a parallelogram? Because because it has four sides. No. Because it has four holes. No. Because it doesn't have any holes. No. Because it has two sets of parallel sides. Yeah. Two pairs of parallel sides. So you can also call this a, a parallelogram. But we're going to call it a quadrilateral. No. So, so far we have a three-sided figure, which is called a triangle, and a four-sided figure, which is called a quadrilateral. Or we can call it a square. Quadrilateral. Okay, we're gonna go to ten. We're gonna see if we can name all the shapes up to ten. All right, ready for the next page, guys? Next week we'll have to have you sit behind the computer so you can watch it with everybody else. Life changed in a wonderful way. The quadrilateral was happy with all the new things it could do. The quadrilateral could be a baseball diamond or first, second, or third base. It could take position on a checkerboard or a chessboard. It could be a television screen, a computer screen, or a movie screen. It could frame windows and frame pictures and much, much more. Look at all the things that the quadrilateral can do. Do you think he's going to be happy being a quadrilateral? It says he's greedy. That's true. The quadrilateral's favorite thing, however, was to be the pages of a book. I hear so many interesting stories that way, it said, which I can tell my friends. Its friends liked hearing the stories. Look, he likes to be the pages of a book so he can tell his friends lots of stories. That's interesting that pages of a book are, are usually quadrilaterals. I wonder why they're not round or triangles or something. Why do you think books only have... Rectangular or square pages usually. They don't have to. But why do they? Probably because it's easy to turn them, and if they're a circle, there's not much like space for them to be together. And mm -hmm. triangle, it won't have like even sides. They'll just be like this. And there's more space too on the page. I wonder how easy it would be to put this on a bookshelf if it was a circle. Oh yeah, it works. <laughs> do you think it would be easy to put it on a bookshelf if it was no. if it was a circle or a triangle? No. Probably not. But one day, the quadrilateral began to feel dissatisfied again. 
I'm tired of doing the same old things at Grumble. There must be more to life. The quadrilateral went back to the shapeshifter. Now, how may I help you, the shapeshifter asked the quadrilateral. I think if I just had one more side and one more angle, my life would be more interesting. That's easy to do. So the shapeshifter turned the quadrilateral into this shape. So if you count the sides, it has one, two, three, four, five sides and five angles. Okay, Canny and Wyatt, does anybody know what a shape's called that has five sides and five angles? It starts with a P. I know. Pentagon. Pa, pa. Pentagon. Pent, do you agree? Pentagon. You're right. It is a pentagon. Penta means five. Pentagon. Now at home, see if you can think of anything that think See if you can think of anything that has five sides in real life. I mean, quadrilaterals are easy. You look around your house, there's lots of things, oh, like doors house. and windows. Oh, Cammie says a whole house. This like, does kind of look like a whole because house. Because it's like a triangle plus a square. Like, yeah. So this hmm. is like a whole house. Interesting. Okay, let's turn the page and see what um, he's going to do when he's a pentagon. Should I move this forward so you guys can sit behind here so you can yeah. actually see the book when I read? Okay, I'm gonna try to do that. Watch out! You need to get up. Get you up. Have to move your chair. It's the push button. Look, it's in our mind. I don't care. Okay. Thirty-five. Okay, sit behind there now, Wyatt. Thirty-five. I'll sit on this side of it. Okay, is that better? Much. Oh, don't pull on it though, Wyatt. The whole thing can come crashing down. Can you sit down, please? Sit down. You don't need to see. Just sit down. Okay. All right, here we go. So now he's a pentagon. Life changed in a wonderful way. The pentagon was happy with all the new things it could do. On a baseball diamond, the pentagon could be home plate. It could be a section on a soccer ball. Look, Wyatt. Or it could appear inside whenever anyone drew a five-pointed star. <gasps> Interesting. So when you draw a five-pointed star, <gasps> there's a pentagon in the middle. That's really cool. I literally a pentagon. Well, it doesn't, it, as long as it has five sides, it's a pentagon. This can be a pentagon. One, two, three, four, five. It doesn't need to be. Can I draw one? It doesn't need to be all equal sides. Can I draw as long one? as it has five sides, it one, can be a pentagon. Two, three, four. Five. I have to connect the wider. It's not a polygon. Like this. Polygon can't this. have any spaces or intersecting lines. Yeah, that's a pentagon. Looks like a heart. It looks like Minnesota. One, two, three, four, oh. five. Nope, not yet. One, two, three, four. <laughs> it's hard sometimes, isn't it? Okay, let's finish with our story. Kids might be getting bored. The Pentagon's favorite thing, however, was to be the headquarters of the United States military near Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah, there's a building in Washington, D.C. called the Pentagon. I hear all the top secrets that way. It said, it's too bad I can't tell my friends. The Pentagon's friends couldn't help feeling left out. Oh, uh-oh. After a while, time seemed to pass slowly for the Pentagon, and it became dissatisfied again. I'm tired of hearing all the same old things, it grumbled. There must be more to life. So the Pentagon went back to the shapeshifter. So you're here again, the shapeshifter said to the Pentagon. Now what would you like? I think that if I just had one more side and one more angle, said the Pentagon, my life would be more interesting. That's easy to do, said the shapeshifter. Poof, the shapeshifter turned the Pentagon into, now think in your brain, it starts with an H. Don't say it. This way, give everybody, give our audience five seconds to think about it. Can I say it? Hexagon. Okay, what is it? Hexagon. 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 Why is it the last one? Okay, so a six-sided shape is called a hexagon. Okay, let's see what else we have. Hexagon. 
Hexagon has six sleeves. I wonder what he gets to do when he's a hexagon. Let's find out. Life changed again in a wonderful way. The hexagon was happy with all the new things it could do. The hexagon fit into the floor as houses. Okay, the hexagon fit in floor tiles as houses in the hexagon fit in as floor tiles in houses and patios, fancy crackers at parties and picnics. It worked as the socket of certain bolts and the prongs of certain wrenches. Oh, so he's in the floor, crackers, and tools. The hexagon favorite thing, however, was to be the cell in a beehive. I love watching the bees as they buzz in and out, it said. The hexagon spent so much time in the beehive, it was too busy to talk to its friends. The friends missed the hexagon and couldn't help feeling ignored. Hmm. So now his friends aren't very happy. Again and again, the shape became restless, dissatisfied, and unhappy with its life. And again and again, it returned to the shapeshifter for more sides and more angles. The shapeshifter agreed to turn into one shape after another. Okay. So let's see how much you guys know. So we have a triangle. Can you please stop doing that? Because when you touch it, it shakes the computer, okay? We have a triangle, a quadrilateral, pentagon, hexagon. What's a seven-sided shape called? I don't know, but... Starts with an H. Anyone? I know what that is, that shape. I can't say it. What is it? Why it can serve? Any of our um, audience members out there know what a seven-sided shape is called? Have your parents type it in for you. I'm looking. I'm scrolling down. Ooh, Jen, parallelogram. Good job. It's called. Uh, Jen, Wesley said his dog Cooper is watching. Maybe we're educating some grown-ups too, because <laughs> often you use these words in your life, right? Oh, Jenny, you're really close. There's a P in there. She said. She said heptagon. H E T. She's really close. It's actually H E P. Hep. Hep. Heptagon. Heptagon is a seven sided shape. How about eight? I bet there's some people out there that know what an eight is. You can say in a second. I want to see if anybody that's watching knows it. Eight sided shape. What's an eight sided shape called? Think of a stop sign. And another clue is um, there's an animal that lives in the ocean with eight arms. And that can give you a clue also of what an eight-sided shape is called. Oh, I know, I know. Oh, there are some people who said heptagon. Jessica, good job. And Sammy, you knew that? Good job. Who, what? Samantha Van Beek knew it was heptagon. That's pretty impressive. And Charity, good job. Okay, anybody else know? Oh, yep, yeah, we, we have a guess. Cammy, what is it? Octagon. Octagon. What why, is why, that? What's the animal in the ocean that has eight legs, I eight arms? Octopus. Octopus. So you think oct, oct, octo means eight. Okay. Here's the next one. Nine sides. Think in your head. What is a nine-sided shape called? Starts with an N. Do you know what, Cammy? <laughs> Uh, a nine of gone? Oh, you're close. She said nine of gone. It's close. Anybody know that's watching what Mom, a nine sided shape is called? Ears. No. I want to know. Oh, Wyatt, Landon's watching you. Watching me, I should say. Hi, Landon. Don't shake this because it shakes this and it makes people, it makes me look shaky on the computer. Okay, so let's keep our hands to ourselves. Mom, I wasn't touching anyone else. Oh, Jen got it. What? Jen, was it Jen or Wesley? <laughs> it's a nonagon. N-O-N-A-G-O-N. And I bet some people out there know what a ten-sided shape is called. Think of ten years. And you might get a ten-sided shape. It's Cammie, what do you think it's it is? It's my decade? A decagon? Decagon. Good job. No, Cammie said octagon, and then she said decagon. She didn't know heptagon, so that one didn't count. Deca. Deca means ten. Decagon. 
Okay, let's see what happens to the shape next. He keeps getting more and more. What, what would happen if a shape kept getting more and more sides and more and more angles? What's it going to look like eventually? If you keep adding more and more sides and more and more this angles. Looks like a circle. Look. The more sides a shape gets and the more angles it gets, it's just going to look more and more like a circle. Okay. Finally, the shape had so many sides and so many angles. Its sides were so small and had trouble keeping its balance. Its friends couldn't tell which side it was on and began to avoid the shape. Ooh, they're like, they're kind of like, what shape is that? Oh, look. One day when the shape was going down a hill, it began to roll faster and faster. It went screeching around corners, crashing into fences and trees, colliding with bicycles and terrifying walkers. At last, the shape came to a stop. It felt tired and dizzy and lonely and sad. Yeah, its friends are not with him. Enough, thought the shape. I don't know which side is up. I can't keep my balance. My friends don't want me around. He could no longer remember why he had been so unhappy as a triangle. He made its way back to the shapeshifter. Aren't you happy yet, the shapeshifter asked. I want to be a triangle again, the shape said. I'm not surprised, said the shapeshifter. And poof, the shapeshifter turned the shape back into a triangle. He should have just been happy being himself, right? The triangle was delighted to have its old shape back again and kept itself very busy. Once again, it held up roofs. Supported bridges, made music in a symphony orchestra, caught the wind for sailboats, became slices of pie and halves of sandwiches, and much, much more. Oh, Look, he's on the face oh, of a Mom. pyramid. Mom, I know mm -hmm. what What? Tile. Oh, yeah, tile. You're right. Still, the triangle's favorite thing was to slip into place when people put their hands on their hips. That way, I always hear the latest news, which I can tell my friends. His friends liked hearing the news and were glad the triangle was back in shape again. <laughs> okay, then in the back, it tells you all the names of the shapes. Did you know that an 11 sided shape is called a undecagon? So instead of a decagon, it's an undecagon. That's kind of weird. And a 12-sided shape is called a dodecagon. D-O-decagon. D-O-decagon. Okay, now I have some math challenges for you. So how we're going to do these is, can you get Cammie's whiteboard for her? Cammie and Wyatt are going to do them here at home on their whiteboards. And you guys can do them at your house. You can just... Do them in your brain, or you can use a piece of paper if you have it. You might not need your whiteboard for some of these. But these are just questions that you can answer out loud. This is a one. Okay. And we can't yell them out. We have to show yeah. up our whiteboard. Yep. Okay. So, preschool. We're going to start with level one. Anybody, everybody can do these, even if you're not in preschool, okay? Level one. Um, tell somebody around you a shape that you heard in the story. Don't, you guys don't tell. Just write it. Or draw it. Draw some shapes you heard in the story, or you can tell somebody at your house some shapes that you heard in the story. Okay. Oh, we're going to let kids at home think Mom, about it. can I have an eraser? The next thing I want you to do is look around your room that you're in and see if you can find any shapes in the room that you, you're in that you heard in the story. So, Wyatt, what's one shape you see in this room that you heard in the story? What's one shape? Oh, this. What's the, what kind of shape is this? Um, it's a rectangle. rectangle or quadrilateral. Quadrilateral. Parallelogram, quadrangle. Cammie, what do you see in the, in the room? I see a square. That's not a square. That doesn't have four equal sides. What is that? It looks like it has four equal sides. Oh, it could be a rectangle. Mm -hmm. Why? What do you see in the room? I see, I do see a square though. I um, see that table. Yeah. Rectangle. Where? Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Rectangle. Yep. Do you see? I see a circle. The clock rectangle. on the wall. Rectangle. We didn't learn that. Well, it still is a shape. Oh, I thought you meant like what you learned. Oh, what you saw. In yeah, the story. I saw the yeah, clock. That's the that. first thing I looked at, and then I looked at something else. Okay, now I'm gonna go up to level two. See if you can either write or draw or tell somebody this at home. You guys keep your voices off so kids at home can do it, okay? What kind of shape has three sides? Tell somebody or draw it or write it. What kind of shape has three sides? 
Is that right? Okay, if you said triangle, you are correct. There's actually, Cammie's learning about triangles in school. She's in fourth grade. And Cammie, how many different triangles are there? There's a lot. There's an acute triangle where they have all small angles. Mm -hmm. And there's an obtuse angle mm -hmm. where they have all our um, big, well, they have one big angle and two small ones. And there's also one other ones like equilateral, whatever you call yeah. it, and isosceles. This is scaling. equilateral because all the sides are the same. Isosceles has two sides yep. the same. Scalene has all different sides. Okay, now tell somebody at home, draw a picture, or write what the name of a shape is that has six sides. Ooh, can you draw a shape with six sides? It doesn't have to have six equal Did sides. Did I spell it wrong? Nope, that's right. I actually spelled or it right. Or tell somebody. Oh, yay. That's a big one. Good job, Addie. Who's Addie? Addie's on here. She said triangle for the last one. That was correct. Who's Addie? It starts with an H. What's Addie? It's tricky, isn't it? Let's bring this in a little bit right here. There, now they're connected. This is why it's six-sided shape. Wyatt, what's that called again? Um, Starts with an H. Hexagon. Hexagon. Any six-sided shape is called a hexagon. Okay. I don't know if there's any hexagons in this room. I don't know if I see any. I'm looking around. The house is a hexagon? Mm, I thought we said that was a pentagon. Oh, yeah. Remember? I don't see any hexagons in this room. I see a hexagon. Where? Oh, yeah, right here. <laughs> okay, next one. Tell somebody at home any of the names you remember for a shape that has four sides. Oh, polygon. Let's see how many names I can think of. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, a shape that has four sides. Wyatt, tell me one name. Square. Okay. Square? Yep, a square is a four-sided shape that looks like this. I would use a ruler if I really wanted it to be good. What else is a four-sided shape? What other shapes have four sides? Um, there's a polygon. Polygon. And yeah. there's quadrilateral. 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 Quadrangle. What about this? Is this a quadrilateral? Yeah, because yeah. it has four sides. Right. What's that? What is that? Diamond. That's a diamond or, or a kite. No. Or a polygon. It's well, you can call it a diamond. This is a kite, actually. Oh. The kite has two shorter sides on top and two Oops. longer sides. This is called a polygon. Rhombus. Rhombus. Rhombus, Rhombus has Rhombus four equal polygon. sides, just like a square. Okay. Yeah, what? You take the square and you just kind of stretch yeah, it. Like you pull the, the side and squish and it. Pull the side or you stretch it. That's what we learned. What's this one called? Like this, right? Is this a quadrilateral? Yeah, that's What's another called? rhombus. That's a rhombus. That's not a rhombus. Doesn't have four equal sides. That's a polygon. No, why? What's this called? This is on was... your map. It is a polygon, but I mean, there's a special name for this kind of shape. It's a rectangle that you squat. Starts with a P. I know. Pear... Parallelogram. Yep. Parallelogram because it has. It started with a P. I knew that. Sides. I knew it started with a P. Let's see. Can I think of any other four-sided shapes? Kite, rhombus, square. Oh, I know. I know. Oh yeah, good one. Cammy thought of this one. Does anybody know? Yes. One set of parallel sides starts with a T. Trapezoid. I want to say it. Okay, try not to bump that. Sorry. Trapezoid. And then there's this one. Wyatt, what's this called? Rectangle. Yep. Wyatt, is, a, is a rectangle a square? No. Is a square a rectangle? No. Yes. A square is a rectangle. You just stretch it and it's a rectangle. But a rectangle, a square is a rectangle because because a rectangle just has to have four right angles. So anything with four right right angles is a rectangle. Squares okay, are also we kind of got. This is what happens in my math class at school. I get a little ahead of myself, and then I start talking about things that are above grade level, which is fun, but get off track. Okay. 
keep your hands to yourself, please. Nope, keep your hands to yourself. Okay, here's the next question. We're on level three. Um, actually, I just did that one. We're on level four. Okay, this is going to be a second grade question. Ready, Wyatt? Second grade. Okay, if you're in if you're in second grade or above or even below, you can challenge yourself and try this. All right, here we go. Ready? I want to know what is the perimeter. I want to say that. I want to say of this. Say do it. it of this okay. shape. Eighteen. Perimeter. Figure it out. Be so obvious. And if you don't know what perimeter it means, the fence around a shape, the distance around it. So if this side is five, and this side is two, what would the perimeter be of the rectangle? How'd you get that? Okay, my kids say it's 14. Oh, Landon says 14, 10 plus 4. Good job, Landon. So 5 and 5 is 10, 2 and 2 is 4, 10 and 4. Why you did it a different way. Can you come and show us how you did it? 7 plus 7. So why did it this way? He did 5 and 2 is 7, and you just double it, and you get 14. Good That's job. how we do it sometimes. Okay, let's do another one. Different okay, what's the perimeter? I'm going to do a little bit trickier one now. Third grade level now? No, we're still on second grade. Right. Pretend like this is a square. <laughs> What's the perimeter of the square? Ooh, I know. Did I do it so right? If it's a square. Did I do it right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes! Shh. I knew it. Cammy, I'm sorry. I'm in fourth grade. I should know this stuff. Okay, Wyatt thinks 24. Cammy, what'd you get? 24. Okay. You just yeah. times 6 by 4 because there's... So Cammy did like 6 times 4 because she's in 4th grade and she got 24. Wyatt, I saw you doing some adding. What did you do? 6 plus 4 goes 12 and 12 plus 12 goes 24. Wyatt did 6 and 6 equals 12 and 12 plus 12 equals 24. Good job. Okay, next level. Finally, 3rd grade. I need to practice last year's stuff. I'm sorry, I just do. Okay, here we go. I want you to see if you can find the perimeter and why you can try this even though you're only in second grade because I bet you can do it. Find the perimeter of this shape. Can you give me the whole perimeter? That's you need second, to give me one number. That second grade, we did that at school. We yes? did that this year too. Oh, okay, well, whatever. Okay, we're going to say this is 10. And this is eight, and this. You don't know what the top one is. Yeah, we don't know what that one is. And this is um, seven, and this is five. So you want the whole like perimeter yep. all together? Okay, think about it and see if you can figure it out. What the perimeter What's of that shape is. You have to figure it out. So if this whole thing is 10. Yeah, don't tell. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm going to tell Ryan. I already know it, though. I already if know. this whole thing is 10 and this is 8, how much would this be? If this is 10 and this is 8. No, but how much would this part be right here? 2. Right. Right. I got it. I got the answer. 27. Cammie, do you, do you do this in class where you say that kind of stuff when you're done? What kind of stuff? I got it. I got the answer. No, only right okay, here. Let's I'm just, just not telling do you. It. Okay, and then Wyatt, this is seven. This is five. So how much is this? Yep, two. So then we just have to add it all up. Ten plus eight and two is ten. Plus what's um, five plus seven? Five plus seven. Can I just say the answer? No, because we're going to check it and see if it's right. 5 and 7 is 12 plus 2. So 10 and 10 is 20 plus 14. What's 20 plus 14? 34. Oh. How long? 34. But, 
Oh, I forgot to add the other side of it. I forgot to add that side right there. That's why it's important to show your work so you can see if you made a mistake. That's why I like to write it out like this. I just forgot to do this side. I did okay. all of it and I got 32. So I technically did kind of write, but I just forgot. Okay. All right, so now we're going up to the next level, grade four. Yes. Okay, so for grade four, and Wyatt, you can just keep listening. For grade four, how about figuring out the area? I want to know. Yeah, we're gonna do that next. Part what three. these triangles are called. So, what is the what would the name of this triangle be? Is this? Don't that say it out loud. Jeez, the kids in my class listen better than you guys. Raise your hand. Scalene, isosceles, right or equilateral. This. Okay, if you said scalene, you are correct. Scalene triangles have three sides that are not the same. Okay, number two, scalene, isosceles, equilateral, or right triangle. Okay, if you said right, you are correct because it has a right angle. How about this one? What kind of triangle is this? It has three equal sides, so it's an what? Equilateral. Equilateral. Triangle with two equal sides, Cami. Isosceles. Isosceles. Here's another one that has three. Scalene. Scalene and what's this one? Isosceles. Two sides has isosceles. Okay, now we're up to fifth grade. Okay, now fifth graders or anybody else who wants to try it or anybody else who's older. I want to try. I need you to see if you, and why you can do this one. We're going to find the perimeter of this Shape first. Because we're just pre we're just making it smaller. Okay, find the perimeter of that shape, everybody. See if you can do it. Trick your numbers now. Do it on there, Wyatt. We'll see if anybody in our audience can figure it out too. What is the perimeter of this rectangle? I'm going to do it. Too. I know it. You don't need to say that. Thank Sorry. Maybe you should keep your work on your whiteboard because then I can show the people who are watching how you did it. Mm. It's okay. If you want, why don't you erase it and put it back on there? In my classroom at school, I always make my kids show their work. When they hold it up, then I can look around and say, oh, look at this kid did it this way. Does anyone have a different way? And then we show it in front of the class because there's lots of different ways to solve math problems. There's not just one way to solve a math problem. Like it? Mm -hmm. I like doing that. It's fun. Yep. Okay, so Wyatt got 104. So this is correct. If you got 104, so Wyatt did 38 and 14 because the two sides are 38 and 14 is 52. 52 and 52 is 104. Good job, Wyatt. And Cami also got 104. And somebody at Laura's house got 104. Wesley got 104. Emily got 104. Good job, guys. Okay, now. Now, Wyatt, this is going to be trickier. What is the area is of the rectangle? Area? area is the sh the space on the inside. So you do it this way? Yep. <sighs> so, Wyatt, you actually have to multiply the two numbers together, what? which you don't know how to do yet, so that's okay. Four times eight equals 38 times 14. I'm going to see if the kids at home can tell me what the area is. Thanks for hanging in there, those of you who are still there. This is kind of a long lesson, but it's fun because I love teaching math and I love to read. 
I know that. I'm just tired. Hmm. Oh, I got it. Okay, so what does Cammy think it is? Cammy did 38 times 14, and she thinks it's 532. Let's see if she's right. Eight, eight times four. Don't tell me. Eight. Can you? Okay, eight times four is 32. 12 and three is 15. Eight three zero three five. That should be correct. I'm going to do it a different way than she did it. This is how they teach her to do it at her school, and that's totally fine. Um, does anybody agree with 532? Or did I lose everybody with that question? Oh, we got somebody that says 512, and, and Wesley says 532. So we're going to see. 38 times 14. Let's see if we can figure out if Cammie is correct. Why, Wyatt? It's over. Because I want to guess ladle. Okay. What? You want to guess ladle? Probably on the other side to see if I know what ladle. 30 times 10, 30 times 4, 8 times 10, 8 times 4. Okay, 300, 120, 80, and 32, which is 532. So another way you can teach multiplication is just by breaking it up into four parts like that, and that way you can do a lot of this in your head and then just add it together at the end. That's way harder. Okay, well, in your opinion. So that's all we have for today. Um, tomorrow I'm going to read another story, maybe this one, but no elephants at 10 o'clock and do a little bit more math. Um, and uh, Cammy, can you hand me that right there? Hand me this, the game. Um, what can you do with your kids for the rest of the day? We are going to go outside and go for a walk soon, even though it looks like it's snowing. That's great. But we're going to go out and go for a walk soon and get some fresh air. We're going to have some lunch. Um, we're going to play some games. Um, I found some dominoes. So dominoes are a great game that you can play that have math in it. You can um, you can even just do things like show this to your child and ask them how many dots do you see and ask them how they knew it. So like with this one, um, how many dots do you see? You might say 14 because I see 6 and 6 is 12 and 2 more is 14 or 7 and 7 is 14 or maybe I see 3, 3 6, 9, 12 and 2 is 14. There's, you'd be surprised at how your child is seeing these dots. So you can ask them how many dots do you see, flash it really quick and ask them and ask them how they knew. Um, another thing you can do with dominoes is you can just play the game where you match the sides. So you do... You just look for pairs. The way that my grandpa and I used to play is we used to look for multiples of five. So we used to put the domino here, and then we used to give ourselves points. So, for example, if I put this one right here, three and seven makes ten. So I would get ten points. So um, that's one way that we used to play dominoes. And then if we put another one, let's say this one has a, a seven there. Um, Okay, anyway, you get the point. So you're looking for multiples of five, and you can get points that way. So we used to play dominoes like that. So I'm going to teach my kids how to play this later today. Of course, books are always good, drawing. Um, have some quiet time away from each other. Um, we're going to do some chores later today. And uh, they've already practiced their piano. And they're going to do some Chinese. And, uh, yeah, we'll get through this. And then I'll see you guys tomorrow at 10 o'clock. All right, have a good day, and let me know if you have any questions. I'll also post some uh, some resources on my author page, um, things you can do with your children. Okay, oh, today's National Panda Day. I did not know that, Laura. Yes, and it's almost St. Patrick's Day, too. So I do have on my author page um, some things you can do for St. Patrick's Day if you just scroll down on my page. Okay, thanks, everybody. Have a good day.